What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about these five horrible, horrible gaming mice. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Some of them are horrible and some are less, much less horrible than others. However, they are all in the price range of less than $10 on Amazon as of now. I'm checking out five gaming mice under $10 each and I'm going to see which ones are shit and which ones are actually worth buying, perhaps. Now, first off, why would you even buy a $10 gaming mouse? Well, for one, it, let's say you're just on an extremely tight budget, that might be the only option you have. Or maybe it's not necessarily for you, but a gift for a loved one, a spouse, you know, child, friend, who is kind of into gaming, but not really enough to warrant buying like a $50 gaming mouse, for example, that could be a, a possibility. Or maybe you're just looking for a reliable backup. Well, I don't wanna say reliable, <laughs> but maybe you're just looking for a backup mouse in case your your daily driver, sh you know, shit hits the fan or whatever, and you just need a backup right away. Then maybe you'll look into something like this. By the way, these are all the top rated, uh, some of the top rated um, user reviewed mice on Amazon. So that's why I picked them. And I've already arranged them here in front of me from my least favorite mouse, on your, your right uh, to my most favorite mouse. And I'm gonna be going down the line from worst to best, uh, explaining what works for me and what doesn't. So on that note, why don't we go ahead and take a look at our first contender here, which is the Bengu. These all have funky names because they're all, you know, Chinese OEM knockoff brands or whatever. And a lot of them are using the same parts and whatnot, but this is Bengu. And you can always tell it's Chinese OEM crap because it's got like three different names. It's got like Game Start, Hemzone, and then the product page on Amazon says Bengu. So who knows what it's really called? Honestly, the comfort level is fairly, fairly good. I, I like the way, I like the shape. I like the feel when I put my mouse, when I put my hand on the mouse. Uh, I am a claw grip user, so bear that in mind. That's the perspective I'm looking at this, all, the, all of these uh, reviews as. Um, but uh, yeah, the comfort level is actually pretty good. It, it's fairly comfortable for my hand and, and the way I use mice. Um, however, it is fairly lightweight. It's actually the lightest mouse, I believe, uh, in our lineup here. And I prefer a bit of heft to my gaming mice, and this is just far too light for that, so I, I would have to dock it some points there. Also, I forgot to mention this, that all of these mice are using optical sensors, and all of them are horrible. That's just nature of the beast. It comes with the territory that if you buy a $10 gaming mouse, you're gonna get a pretty lousy sensor. Uh, so just for the for the sake of argument, assume that all of these sensors are the equal amount of suck. Um, now, my biggest gripe with this mouse is that the buttons are all super hypersensitive. First of all, they're springy, especially the front and back buttons. They are incredibly springy and uh, not very tactile at all. They're rather mushy. Aside from that, the buttons are just really easily pressed. And I, I experienced a lot of uh, misclicks when I was trying to, to game with this thing. Just, uh, you know, from moving really fast, I would turn really fast in game uh, and then accidentally hit the side button. Uh, it's also fairly cheap. I would say this has the, the worst build quality out of all five of the mice here. Um, just Not just in terms of just how light it is, but also uh, the scroll wheel seems really, really kind of wonky and, uh, and, and the DPI buttons in particular. Like, listen to this. Is there even anything in this mouse? It's just completely hollow. It's just like hollow plastic clicking. Yeah, so it doesn't sound very good. Not very satisfying to click. Too sensitive on the buttons pretty much everywhere. However, it's comfortable. That's the one redeeming quality. However, I still would not recommend it even for $10. Let's move on to the next mouse. This one is a Funta. A Funta. And again, there's like 30 names on here. It also says Zelotes. I think it's just a, a much wider profile. So it fits your hand a lot differently. It's kind of hard to compare to the, uh, the Bengu. However, it is very comfortable. I do like it. There are some gripes though that I have. The uh, side here, the the, uh, the pinky grip is very slippery on this outer side of the mouse. My pinky just kind of tends to, to slide around on that area and it's not very, it's not the best. I wish there was a bit more grip there. And while there is some grip for your thumb, it's kind of got this recessed, these little grooves and the grooves kind of, I don't know, they kind of like sink into my thumb after a while. They don't feel as comfortable uh, after prolonged periods of time. So I'm not a huge fan of that. The build quality, is better, better than the Bengu. However, it's still it's still lacking in the buttons. All these side buttons are springy here. The left and right mouse buttons are pretty solid. Just kind of like the, the nice nice level of tightness that I like. And also the scroll wheel is much better than the Bengu. Um, and the scroll click requires a bit of actuation force to actually uh, click in the scroll wheel. I, I wish it was a bit easier. It does have a DPI button for up to 5,500 DPI, which is nice. It's also got a braided cable, a braided USB cable. Actually, all these mice have braided USB cables, surprisingly, except for this one, which is a USB, but it's got kind of a rubber, 
a rubber material and I'll, I'll get into that later. So my main gripes with this mouse is that I, I'm not a fan of the pinky grip that's super slippery on the outside here. And the, uh, the side buttons and this front button here are very springy and uh, do not feel very good uh, when, when clicking. However, they are very well placed. I will say that. So this next one is the Sotec or Sautec. I don't know, it's not Zotac. That's that's not that's not what I said. But uh, okay, we've got some LEDs here that are kind of just cycling through different colors. I don't believe you can change any of them. Uh, just like the Bengu, I didn't mention that. It also has a bunch of funky colors. Seven, I believe, that uh, just cycles through. The uh, the side grips here, the, the, this side grip on the outside is much better than the, uh, the Afunta, which is a little bit more like kind of a rubberized material. And the inside thumb grip is also nice to, uh, to rest your thumb on. However, it does feature those same grooves that we saw on the Afunta, which I'm not a fan of again. The buttons are relatively tactile. The scroll wheel, so far this is the best scroll wheel that we've seen. And a DPI button is, is firm, but has a nice click to it. And the issue that I'm having right now is the front and back buttons. The back button is very accessible, but the front one is a little bit out of reach for me. I wish both of these buttons were just moved back you know, a smidge, a couple centimeters maybe, and that would have been perfect. And uh, I was having some issues with this mouse. Anytime I'd plug it into my uh, to hotline over here, the system would just blue screen. It just crashed instantly. I finally got it to work by just rebooting and, you know, rolled the dice by sticking this mouse in again. And uh, somehow it didn't crash that time, so I was so I was able to test it out more thoroughly. Also, the e even though the uh, the scroll wheel feels great, um, in practice it actually sucks when you're scrolling you know, through web pages and whatnot. The speed of the scrolling fluctuates like crazy. You'll be going, you know, speed, you know, scrolling a mile a minute, and then all of a sudden you'll just like, it'll it'll get stuck, if you will. And you'll just have to keep scrolling until it, uh, you know, evens out again. So, so that wasn't really good. I, this is the only mouse that had an issue with the scroll wheel like that. Next up, we've got the Sodi. And actually on the top of the mouse here, it says James Donkey. I, I don't even, I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, you can see it's got some nice orange LED accents that are very subtle. It's got a subtle glow on the back end, uh, as well as kind of peeking through the DPI button in the middle, you know, at the same time. Uh, it looks really kind of a classy mouse, actually. For, for $10, I would say this probably has the highest build quality so far. The actual comfort level is pretty good. And actually, I, I love the weight. I love the weight. It's got uh, some nice heft to it. And it's got these grips on the side that are kind of a gel material. And they're really like, I don't want to say sticky, but they're really grippy. And I'm not used to feeling this kind of material on mice. However, it actually feels pretty nice. I wouldn't mind using this mouse um, just, just for things. The scroll wheel is also very, um, very sturdy. It's not wobbly at all. It's got a nice firm click and uh, left and right buttons are fairly tight. The side buttons are probably my my one complaint here. They're a bit springy. And this does go up to 2000 DPI. I wish it, w I wish it went a little bit more than that. It's also got an on off switch uh, on the bottom here. Oh, that's just for the LEDs. And uh, again, this is the one mouse that doesn't have a braided cable. Instead, it uses this rubber rubber cable and it's it's very strange. I don't know why they used rubber, maybe it's just to go with the style. However, I think rubber on for a cable is is not the best because it gets snagged on things easily. Uh, there's uh, there's quite a bit of friction. I'm not a huge fan of that. But uh, overall, this is a very comfortable mouse and um, if it wasn't for a, you know the crappy sensor, I'd probably even pay more than $10 for it. So that's gonna bring us to our last and my favorite mouse personally, uh, which is the TechNet Raptor. And um, this mouse looks very similar to the Cooler Master Sentinel. If you remember the CM Storm Sentinel, it looks very similar to that. I'm curious to know if they've got, you know, this, working with the same OEM at some point. Uh, however, it is, it is different and it's super comfortable. It is my favorite mouse in terms of comfort level, uh, simply be just because it matches the shape of my hand very naturally. But um, what really impressed me with this mouse are the switches. The switches for, for the left and right buttons are incredibly tight and just they feel really good to click. Um, you wouldn't even even think that this is a $10 mouse. Also, the, the front and back buttons, while they're not as high quality, I would say, as the, uh, the James Donkey over here, they do not feel springy at all. They are simply like, you know, you go less than a millimeter and it's just a click. There's no spring, spring action whatsoever. It's just no bullshit. You press it and it clicks. It's a very like satisfying click. Uh, again, they're, they're plastic switches and they're a little bit on the cheaper side. However, it still feels really good and tight. Uh, that's what she said. You've got a DPI button. I believe this goes up to 2000 DPI as well, just like the Sodi. 
And uh, again, six buttons. It's got blue LEDs all around on the, uh, the scroll wheel as well as the body, kind of on three different areas there. And the scroll wheel is actually fairly nice as well. Um, it's got uh, it's got some loose scrolling action. It's not it's not too rigid, and the uh, the scrolling button itself, the scroll click, feels just right. And um, it does have a little bit of texture on the sides here, so where your uh, your ring finger or pinky would go on the outside, and where your thumb goes, um, it's it's still really smooth plastic. And I would have liked a little bit like just a bit of grip material. However, they've just got some a little bit of etching to uh, create just ever so slightly a sensation of grip. Uh, however, it is uh, definitely notably more slippery than the Sodi with its with its gel grips. And it's got a black uh, braided cable, very classic. And overall, super comfortable mouse. Switches are good, everything's good, everything checks out. So for 10 bucks, yes, I would recommend this mouse. I would even recommend the Sodi. I would recommend the James Donkey any day of the week. But um, if I had to choose, I would probably go with the TechNet Raptor. This is, by far the best $10 gaming mouse I have ever had the privilege of using. If you guys are interested at all in any of these gaming mice, go ahead and check the description below. I've got links all there. However, be warned, if you pick up any of these three mice over here, I am not liable or responsible for any kind of pain that they may cause. Uh, I, I would recommend the James Donkey. Get, hop on the James Donkey, yo. This, this mouse kicks ass for 10 bucks as well. Um, so e either of these two mice, I'm sure that you would be satisfied for spending ten dollars with, uh, I think uh, you know they're 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 very much worth the money. So that's pretty much going to do it for now, guys. Hopefully you found this video a bit interesting. I know there isn't too much information out there on ten dollar gaming mice these days, uh, but if you enjoyed the video, be sure to toss me a like, subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, and I will see you all in the next video.